So this is gonna be part two to this natural pool that I built here. So I got a few things in mind that I wanna do. The objectives for this video is gonna be getting rid of all this grass, planting all of my aquatic species here, and as well as putting in a pump and filter. So I think the best idea is to put all this on a little slab here, but I'm not even gonna bother with that. I'm just gonna stick it right on the ground for right now. We're just gonna hook everything up. And if I find things are working good and that's where I wanna keep it, then maybe I'll pour a pad later before the end of this year. But for right now, I'm not worried about making things look good. Let's just get this thing functioning.
You won't need to measure. I'm guessing. Get out of here. No, it's not for you. No, no. So for the inlet for this pump, I chose this inch and a half pool vacuum hose. And it's pretty rigid. It doesn't cave in as easily as like the corrugated pipe that you normally see for like drainage and stuff. So the trick was to be able to adapt it to PVC. I had to get this coupler and it's got, you can see it's got the, like the threads in it. The original cuff that came with it was hot glued onto it. I don't know if you can see it on the inside there. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hot glue this on the inside. And then this other side fits right over the PVC pipe. And I can hot glue that and clamp it. I could have used this to adapt to the PVC, but look at the inside diameter on this cup. It reduces it down about three eighths of an inch. So this one keeps it the same size as the pipe, right into the PVC. And remember, this is pulling water in, so there's not gonna be any pressure on it. If this was for water going out and there was pressure on it, I wouldn't do this. This probably wouldn't hold.
So I'm all ready to hook up these one inch poly lines. That goes for all the biofilters. There's three of them. And then the last one, because I got four of them, is going to be for the waterfall. We won't hook that up right this second. Let's just get this thing filtered out first. Just so you guys know, I'm only using 100 PSI poly. It's the cheap stuff. It's like 50 cents a foot. If you guys remember from my last video on this pool, I got this loop that goes from here all the way over to here. And basically the idea was that I drilled eighth inch holes, like hundreds of them, but I didn't start it until right about there where it's gonna be underwater. And then all the way over there, and then I stopped at the end of that one. And so that way the water doesn't get up here and you just put a cap here, like one of these things. And then that way, it'll force all the water out of the holes and not get any outside of here. And the idea, the idea behind this was a couple different things. First of all, I wanted to be able to replace the one inch poly pipe if I need to. So that's just a sleeve for it. But it's also perforated. So it's inside of that sleeve which makes it so silt doesn't get in the, the actual poly pipe, but also it makes it so that I can pull that out, put a new one in if something happens to that one. And that's a done deal, it's easy. The other part of this sleeve that I really liked was the fact that I didn't have to poke it through the liner and make it waterproof. 
I wanted this to be hidden, which I will put more gravel on it when I'm done here, so you won't see it anymore. And I'll figure something else out for where it goes outside here and where it goes outside there, maybe some fake stones or something. But the idea is that I didn't want to poke through the liner like you normally would with a regular pool. I didn't want to have to worry about waterproofing that, even though it probably is not too bad, but I didn't want to like poke through under the gravel. And then if it leaks, I don't even know it's leaking. And then I got to tear all the gravel up to repair it. I didn't want to go through any of that. So this is much more simple. And if you guys remember, that's the loop that I tried out when I was first doing this pool last year. So what that is, the pipe that goes in is this one, and that's just solid. And then this one goes around in that way, and out, out past that way. I already put a cap on that one. But the idea is that this is kind of like a transport pipe. Like, this is solid. It gets me from here over to the pump, because the pump's over there and this is over here. I didn't have to do that with the pipe that goes over there and goes that way because I didn't have to get across the thing. So that's why this is kind of confusing the way this is. But this is the pipe that feeds this whole loop right here. And this is the pipe that feeds this whole loop right here. So all three of those are hooked up. So all I got to do is hook up the inlet on the pump and give it some power and we'll try it out. So you can see I got one blank sleeve here and that one goes right there that's that loop that's in the water that goes around like that so the idea behind that one is that one goes to the bottom and that one pulls in the water and I got that in the perforated pipe so what I'm gonna do so that it doesn't clog up the pump while I'm not here or something is I'm gonna block off the end of that with some filter fabric that way it's only pulling water through the holes and then I'll just take this vacuum hose and stick it in there. And then that way I can't suck up any leaves or anything from the bottom. Anything that's going to clog up the pump. Because I don't want that pump to burn out while I'm not here because it gets clogged up or something. So there's plenty of holes in that pipe. So even if something gets stuck to the side of it, there's so much surface area that it's still going to pull in water from somewhere and give it to this pipe right here. So hopefully I can get this through this pipe.
All right, so this is kind of the moment of truth now. Let's see if this works. Everything's all ready to go. So I'll go ahead and open some of these valves. So this pump is a 120 volt. Just got a plug on it. It's 13.8 amps. So for right now, we're gonna run this on an extension cord just to try it out. So before I turn it on, I gotta fill this up with water. So it's going to take a lot of lily pads to cover all this area. I do want a lot of them, but it's a lot of lily pads to plant. I'll wait for them to reproduce, but at least we got them started now. Hopefully these plants will live through the winter, or at least the, the roots will. I don't want to do this every year. But you can see these other plants that I got here, they're, they're doing pretty good. I can only work on this a little bit at a time, and I've accomplished getting it functioning, so that's good enough for now. So all the pipes that are sticking out, the corrugated pipes, the PVC, the poly pipes, it all looks really ugly and man-made. So I want to figure out a way that I can cover them up and make them look more natural. So what I'm thinking is in the next video, I can somehow fabricate some rocks, like some faux rocks, just to cover all this stuff up. That one's going to be a fairly large one, so I might have to do something different there. But I'm thinking like foam crete on the top maybe to keep it insulated so it doesn't make so much noise, as well as it'll keep it light. So maybe I'll make some foam crete rocks. I have a little foam crete maker. I've been wanting to mess with it for a while. Also, in the next video, I want to mess with this. It doesn't really show up that good on camera, but this was intended to be like a little hot tub sitting up here. And then the idea was that filtered water would come from the bottom, basically, and then go into the filter and out 
and into a heater and then brought it over to here and then that way I would have heated filtered water and when the heater's not running it would just be circulating the water back into the other water so it kind of aerates it and then it goes down that waterfall that was the plan that way when I'm not heating it it's still circulating water filtering water and giving it some oxygen from this part right here so the idea was that I was gonna make it maybe out of concrete and then it would overflow into here probably pour this off with concrete and then put a waterproofing membrane on it and then build up like a little curb around the outside on the top that's all level so I could put like a solar heater in line with that and then that way it runs all the time and I don't have to worry about the propane or electric or whatever would be on it wasting fuel or electric the whole way that I designed this from the beginning was that that could heat the water coming into here and if I run it long enough it'll keep going down and heating up that too because it's taking water from the bottom which is going to be the coldest and then circulating it around and then it'll maybe make it a little bit more comfortable if I let that run for a few days that way when it gets into the fall it's not super cold in here so eventually that pipe will be buried and it'll come out right there and then the water will reach a certain point and then just overflow over there when we start living here i definitely need a fence around this whole thing maybe some cameras and some lights this looks really unnatural here so that's another spot where i'm going to put these faux rocks so one here one there one there one there and then something big over there that might be a fun project i was thinking maybe like start out with some balloons and some foam and then cover it with air crete and then take the foam and balloons out when I'm done. That way it's hollow. That way I can make my own faux rock. I know you can buy faux rocks, but I want one that fits right there and makes it look natural. So the first video on this project, I got a lot done, like way more than I did in this video. And so I'm gonna link that in the description so that you guys can see where I started from, from the beginning, because this was a big project last year. And it turned out just as good as I expected it to. I love these plants being in here. They look so cool. They're forming a little bit of algae right around the plants. I don't know why. I don't have this thing running all the time. That's another thing I gotta do. I gotta run some electric over here. Cause right now I just have a extension cord, a 12 gauge extension cord coming over here, but that's 200 feet long and that's 14 amps. So it's kind of maxing out that uh, extension cord. So I end up not leaving it on for very long, only when I'm here. So I kind of laid out for you guys all the different things that I'm gonna do in the next video. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get to it this year. I'm hoping I can though, cause this is kind of a fun project. We haven't been swimming in this a lot, but that's just cause we got a lot of other stuff going on. Once we get living here, I think it'll be a lot different. And that was kind of the whole idea. Anyways, I knew this was gonna take some time, but it's what I want. Next time I'll show you guys how cool it looks with all these lights. See those little lights right there? They light up all different kinds of colors and they make the water look really cool at night, especially around these plants. I love the look of these stones around the plants. All right guys, well anyways, I'm done with this video. So I'll see you on part three.